in his victory speech, new Conservative Party leader Aaron O'Toole laid out a new vision for the Tories. It's one that aims to be more appealing to women and new Canadians. This comes as Canada faces a weakened economy and protects against systemic racism, or protests rather against systemic racism. Aaron O'Toole is joining us from Ottawa this morning, from your kitchen this morning in Ottawa. Good morning to you. Good morning, Emery. Yeah, first of all, congratulations to you in person. Uh, taking a look uh, at the breakdown of the leadership race, it shows social conservative is what supported your win. However, if the party, the Conservative Party, needs a rebrand in order to beat the Liberals in the next election, are you progressive enough? Is this, this new uh, Conservative progressive enough to give fiscally conservatives and socially progressive conservatives a place to go when an election is called? Well, actually, I'm proud to have support across the country and across the spectrum. My biggest win, Emery, was in Quebec, which is the most socially progressive province in the, in the country. I run on respect. So I have support from social conservatives down ballot, even though I wasn't their first choice. I have support from Westerners, even though I'm from Ontario. So the only place uh, uh, I didn't do as strong was the Maritimes, but my wife's from there. I served in the military. So I like to think I had a clear mandate. And now we're building a professional government in waiting to, to hold the Trudeau government to account, both on the ethical scandals with the We Charity and other things, but also for an economic plan for the future post-first wave of COVID. You know, there was a lot of discussion after the last leadership race that, you know, the Conservatives under Andrew Scheer looked a lot like what they did under Stephen Harper. Some have said it's really no different with you being cast as a leader, that the party needed to look more progressive, needed to be more progressive in order to be more centrist to be in order to beat the liberals in the next election can your party do that can you be more centrist given the strong support you have from social conservatives well look i i invited on election night it was early in the morning so not everyone saw it i invited people to take another look at the conservative party because we have we're proud of our principles we're proud of our history but over half of our caucus, Emery, wasn't elected in the time we were in the Harper government. We have the youngest member of parliament in our caucus at 22. We have a whole range of, of millennial members of parliament, men and women from across the country. Uh, I want people that uh, haven't voted conservative before, for whatever reason, to take a look. There, there's a new leader that's there to fight for you. We need someone who's serious after the challenges we're facing from COVID, not just an image-based politician like Mr. Trudeau. So I invite people to take a look. They're going to see a party that wants to represent every part and every group in Canada. And I want more Canadians to see themselves reflected in the Conservative Party. One of the things some of those uh, members that you're trying to appeal to are looking at is the issues of racism that this country is discussing right now, specifically systemic racism. I haven't heard your definition of whether or not you feel that that plays into where we're at right now as a country and what your stance is on that. Well, I've been advocating on this for a few years now. I've had concerns about discrimination, racism in the federal public service, and I've written to Liberal ministers and didn't even get strong answers on it. One of the things I mentioned to the Prime Minister when he congratulated me last week was I wanted our committees back in action quickly because we actually had all-party agreement on a study into policing and concerns about racism in the RCMP. Justin Trudeau's prorogation cut that committee study down. So I've already written Minister Blair saying the Conservatives want to get that going because the issue with systemic racism is some people call it income inequality. There's other people have concerns about the justice system, outcomes. Let's make sure we work on it because everyone in Canada should have the opportunity that this amazing country represents. And we're committed to that. And uh, I would like to see the government move quickly to get that committee back on the rails. We can both agree on that, but do you agree that there's systemic racism in Canada? I think there's racism in Canada. But as I said, when I've, I've heard law enforcement officers suggest that when that term is used without any specific detail, like what is the issue? Is there training problems? Is there an institutional problem? We have to make sure that we really get to the bottom of what we want to improve so that we can address uh, communities' concerns or lack of trust with the police, for example, without suggesting that all members of a force are somehow racist. So these discussions are most important. They also mean, need to be more than just uh, a, a Twitter exchange, which is what I see with a lot of people these days, which is why I want the committee back right away, which is why the prorogation, again, to, to save their skin in the we scandal, really held ba back Canada from discussing this in a serious way and bringing all the leaders, including the commissioner of the RCMP, 
to this committee to address the issues. You talked about taking a closer look uh, at some of the policies that maybe uh, hurt your chances in the last federal election. One of those would be on issues around uh, the environment. What is your new policy around the environment that would appeal to a more centrist conservative? Well, I consider myself uh, environmentally conscious. I worked on environmental issues both as a lawyer in the private sector and on conservation as a volunteer. I want to make sure that the Conservative Party addresses reducing emissions while keeping our economy strong. A carbon tax does not reduce emissions. In fact, it's been failing and making us less competitive. So how can we work with the provinces to get emissions down? I am committed to that, but in a way that doesn't leave tens of thousands of Canadians out of work. It, it is harder, but this is actually an area where I think, uh, Amory, Ottawa needs to follow the lead of the provinces. They're closer to their local economy and job creation. So this is an area where we need more collaboration, not the confrontation that we've seen with Mr. Trudeau in terms of imposing a tax. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, just before we let you go, I see that you're there in your family kitchen, the heart of the home. It's where a lot of people do their homework. Where will you be sending your kids to school this fall? Uh, our kids are both going to school. Uh, my, my daughter, our Molly, starts high school, so she's as trepidatious about that as they are about the return. I have a lot of confidence in our, in our schools and the plans that are being made. And remember, children are the most resilient with respect to the coronavirus. And, and any parent knows, and I know the people watching from their kitchen this morning know that that isolation for children uh, was very hard on them. We, we have mental wellness concerns if kids are secluded and not having that social interaction. So let's do sanitation, let's do proper distancing, let's get it right. But we need to make sure kids are in school. That's my view. Aaron O'Toole, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.